Hello there, this is Brandon Falk, and today I'm going to be going over the serial to parallel converter that I've been working on recently. So, this setup is fairly simple, although it might look kind of complex, but I have a lot of data lines going to the LEDs, which I'll show you later, and I also just have a lot of kind of clutter, and I have a lot of ICs that aren't using all of the pins, so I have some AND gates and inverters and JK flip-flops in there which are not being fully used, so there's a lot of unused pins, so it's not like these chips are being fully used and there's really this much going on here. But there are five main ICs, an oscillator and some LEDs. The LEDs are only for this video and for kind of display purposes. But I'll just go through the individual components I have on here right now. This first one is a 7444... It's a 74040 which is a 12-bit counter, and this is what we use to divide the crystal down for our different frequencies used, and it's a 14.7456, uh, which is the standard for serial ports in computers. The next chip we have in a row is the 74164, which is our serial-to-parallel converter. The next chip is a AND uh, an AND gate, which is a 7408. Then we have an inverter, which is a 7404. And finally, we have our JK flip flops, which are a 74107. So those are the five main chips: the oscillator and the um, and the LEDs. The main thing in this is here is this yellow alligator clip that goes through this 4.7k. Maybe it's a 1K, I can't remember what I put on there. Nope, that's a 4.7K, which goes directly into an inverter. The first thing that happens is it's inverted. And if, if you want to open up the schematic that will be linked below, you can do that if you want to kind of follow along. I don't know if you're watching this to kind of learn how I did this as well. But that goes directly into an inverter, which then goes out to... I use this slot, I used to have an AND gate here, but I don't use it anymore, but the, the AND gate is not used, but I do use a segment of my breadboard that the AND gate does fall on, but it, it really shouldn't be an issue. So that inverts directly, and it goes directly to the serial to parallel converter, so there's one line, but that also outputs directly to the clock line on the JK flip-flop, which is used for edge detection. Now, essentially what happens to this, when the first start bit comes on, that triggers a, uh, I can't remember if it's an upwards or downwards on the JK flip-flop, but whatever it does, it sets the JK flip-flop, which then stores that we've encountered a start bit. Once we know that we've encountered a start bit, the uh, not part of the JK flip-flop, so the inverted output, and it's only inverted because of how this counter works. But that, when, when this is set, when the JK flip-flop is set, the counter will start counting. Then on this orange wire here, it outputs at 115.2 kilobaud, which is our sampling frequency for the serial port, which I'm sure if you're familiar with ser serial ports, you're familiar with 115.2 kilo, hertz, baud, whatever you want to call it. Um, then from there, what happens is the this basically this goes through eight times until there's a yellow line is set. So it divides the 115200 by another eight, which is how we detect that we've received all of our bits. There's no error checking or anything here. We just assume. So that goes in to an AND gate as well as the dividing by one on the counter as well. So that enables this, so this AND gate is open and then closed in such a quick amount of time, but that's what's used to reset the JK flip-flop. So essentially, that is the summary of the circuit. We use the JK flip-flop to determine if we have encountered a start bit. Once we have, we pulse eight times, and then the JK flip-flop is reset again. We have some inverters in there due to how some of these circuits or how some of these ICs have different edge detection, so I need to change it from going positive to negative or vice versa. So I use some inverters. The AND gates, I only have that one to make that really quick pulse. 
and then the rest of it is just a bunch of outputs to the actual LEDs. So let's just see this in action. So I'm going to turn my lab light off here so we can see these LEDs better. There you go. It should be adjusted. Now, you can see I have two LEDs in the middle which are unused, but this is my way of having the two nibbles separated, so it's a little bit easier to read this in hex if you're familiar with hex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a program which will count all the way up to FF using these LEDs, and it will uh, pulse every 100 milliseconds. So there you can see it's counting, and I guess that's, that's, that's what it does. It counts. So there's not, there's not much more to say about it counting here. We're just going to go all the way up to all of the lights being on like they were when I started the program. But it's, it's really cool. All of this is, this is a FreeBSD driver right now. It doesn't have to be a driver. It can be user mode. But I wanted to do some kernel stuff. But all it is is a loop that outputs to the serial port and then sleeps for 100 milliseconds and then does it again and it has a counter which is how we determine this. So that's how this works and I hope you like this video. There will be a schematic below and as well as probably documentation in the future of how everything works if you don't feel like listening to this video or you want to read it in text to see how all of these are actually working together to produce the output we need. But that's what we have so far, and I, I hope you like it, and I'll have another video hopefully with this and my instrument cluster working together pretty soon. Thank you for watching.